All right, so it is a cold Monday morning, but we are starting back another work week with another bunch of salvage. And I got some really good stuff to show you all this weekend. I got one sitting out there that you don't know about. And uh, you might be interested in the title status and what I bought and how much I paid for it. But first, we're wrapping things up this morning so we can get this thing on the lot. The Dodge we did last week, I told y'all it needed a wheel bearing. So that's what we're doing. But I want to show you a tool real fast. So I got this tool in the mail. A company reached out to me and wanted to send me this tool to give it a try out. This is a uh, torque wrench. I don't know, what is it, Anpuds? I don't even know how to pronounce the name of the company. Um, but I said, sure, send it my way, I'll try it out. I later reached back out to him, I was like, look, I don't have a bit time to do a video on like the whole thing, unfortunately. Uh, but we figured we would throw it in here. So, I mean, it's got a nice carrying case. Now with this thing being a torque wrench and not one of the big name brands, sure um you know a lot of people's gonna have questions about its accuracy i don't have um the answer to its accuracy like i can't tell you how accurate it is but i can show you the product and show you what they sent real fast and then we're going to give this thing a try so it comes with some paperwork the max error percentage stuff like that um decent little case comes with an extension I like these extensions almost look they they look cheap but i mean it's just metal it's just a metal extension it's almost got like a satin look to it but it comes with a 17 millimeter which is nice 19 millimeter and then this should be 21. so the cool thing is it does come with three common sizes that we use a lot on wheels and stuff and then the torque wrench does look pretty cool and it looks like just a standard uh turn you know and lock style it has this uh quick lock that you do so we're gonna put this thing on this dodge and just hit these three bolts on this hub normally we just do an impact but i figured we'd give this thing a go um decently close the sockets man the sockets are really cool like it's like they got a coating on the outside protect it so it'd be nice rim socket to start. what size was them bolts ed all right, so we're gonna let Ed set this up to what spec he wants uh, for this. Now, we're not going super precise. Like I said, most people put these wheel bearings, the studs through there, and most people just run them up with the impact gun. We're gonna check them with an the impact gun, but I just wanted to go ahead and kind of get a feel for the, the tool and how it works. So we're just gonna go close. Um, there's other videos out there actually on this tool with the accuracy of it. However, I can't, uh, I have no way to measure the accuracy. So if I say anything, I would just be making it up. You got a socket? Um, yeah. um, I would just be making it up. So I don't want to say something to make it up. So we're just going to see if it even breaks on Ed or if it works or how it feels. There you go. That's one. All right. So, I mean, that click sounded good. I don't know if y'all heard that. Like, it sounded nice and loud. It's not. There you go. The ratcheting feel good, Ed? Oh, yeah. They say it sounds, I mean, the ratcheting sounds good, and it's, I mean, it's holding the torque spec on it. So there's three. Um, but yeah, so I'd say, I mean, if you're looking for a cheap torque wrench, a lot of people go to Harbor Freight. Everybody knows that people go to Harbor Freight and everything to do that. Um, this is a good option. So you can check this out. I'll put the link in the description on this video of this tool so you can go check it out for yourself. There's other reviews on it. And, um, you know, that way you can get the name and all that. And you can kind of wait out for yourself. But the, between the case, has an adapter to step it down to 3 eighths. Um, this may not be a bad tool to just have around. I think what I'll probably do with this one um, is probably throw this in the race car trailer to have a spare uh, for like the racetrack for if we need to you know possibly do something um close to it because i don't have a torque wrench in the race trailer at all so i don't do my engines or anything like that tkm does all that but it should be a good spare to have laying around for sure the carrying case it comes with if i'm going to do an honest review which is what the company's asked for uh the product i see no you know see no issue with like i said i have no way to measure the accuracy of it but uh the case so you're supposed to store a torque wrench with no torque on it at all. And I actually screwed it all out of the way out, way out. I went and put it in the case and it wouldn't fit. So I had to keep creeping it in. And so we are on 30 foot pounds, 35 maybe, 35 foot pounds of torque. And that is the bare minimum that you can have 
to get this thing to fit inside the case. Um, so you might just want to put this in your toolbox and not in the carrying case. That way you can run it all the way out because you shouldn't tore you shouldn't store a torque wrench with any torque on it at all of any amount. Well, I'm sanding scotch writing this truck again for I think this yeah this is the third time. So the first time I sprayed this, the color was way off. All right. So then the second time that we sprayed this, the um, I, I spent some time to match the color up a little bit more, but it still wasn't 100 percent right. So the first time the color didn't match. Second time. I went back and tried to match it. This uh, single stage AOK -okay is extremely hard to match if you wanna uh, try to work with it. So the um, next time I tried to just mix paint. So I took the, the too bright of white and I took the too dark of white and basically kept cutting them together to try to get a match, something that was close. Um, however, that's what I ended up with. So I don't know if you can tell, but this stuff is darker than that white. That's a brighter white. Um, it might honestly be hard to tell being everything is scuffed down, but this is just the wrong shade of white. This piece right here is clear, is not scuffed yet. That is just not the same color as that. It's a little too creamy, bluish hue to it. Um, so, so being, I can't get the color right. We're gonna just base coat, clear coat this this time using a Vitek clear. That's a crappier clear, so it should match closer to the crappy single stage. And then another thing that I messed up on, which I can't show you, I've already wet sanded it all out, is I forgot to put a hardener in this uh, single stage. So this single stage can be shot without hardener. Your AOK 200 does not require a hardener. However, that changes the sheen. So the hardener we use is called a wet look hardener and it gives it a glossy look so being i left the hardener out the door was also really like uh satinish more like flat so all around that's a good shot right there i don't know if the camera can pick it up but just how much more creamier than white that is so being the uh, hardener was left out of it and the color still didn't match perfect i decided we're just gonna go ahead and attempt to do this with uh base coat clear coat now when you put base coat over top of this aok -okay, the AOK -okay could wrinkle, so we're going to have to go really slow uh, doing this. Basically, we could be fighting with the same thing that we did on the two-tone F-150 job. But you can see how crappy of a job this is. I mean, look at the paint all over the seals and stuff. Like, it's just it's just a cheap work truck job. I'm just still trying to make it look good. Here's a good comparison if the camera will pick it up of how creamy, goldish, yellowish uh, this is versus how white the original white was because we didn't repaint this. This was painted for the first time. Um, first time we did it, same with this. These are darker than these right here. This is what sucks with the AOK -okay is, you know, my fault. I didn't write down the paint code. I just wrote GM white because GM white is what we normally spray on all of our stuff. And for some reason, it just, it's not working. It don't match. So we're trying to make it right. Not everything is all uh, perfect and works out every single time, even when you do it for a living. You got to remember in life. Sometimes everything ain't banana and turkeys all the time. Sometimes they're peaches and broccoli. All right, y'all, come here. Check out this. So you've been on the channel for a while. You remember the Jeep that I bought the wife. We're gonna sell that. So if you've been on the channel, hit me up. Email's in the description if you're on my Facebook or whatever. It might already have been posted, I don't know, but you could try reaching out to me. I think I'm gonna keep this one. I bought this one to flip, but it's kind of nice. So I think I'm gonna keep it and sell the wife's uh, lifted Jeep. So this thing was totaled out and all that's wrong with it is the hatch is dented there from where this bike rack come back and hit it where somebody rear-ended it. Um, so we can clean the paint up off that, take the bike rack off. The back bumper's messed up. It's dented right there, so we can pop that bumper out. And that's it. Tail light's got a crack in it, but I ain't really worried about that. I might order a set of tail lights or get another set from the junkyard. But that's it. That's the only thing wrong with this Jeep, and they totaled it. Uh, Eddie just drove it. Where's Eddie at? Did he say it run good? He said it drives Eddie said it drives amazing. So. Actually, what he says it's money. It's money. That's what Eddie said. So if y'all remember the other Jeep that we bought, if you want it, hit me up. Because I think I'm going to let it go and let her keep this one. This one's only got 132 on it. Sunroof works, everything works. Got a new AC compressor, even though the AC's not working. Um, 
but this thing is solid dude we paid 1200 i think in 75 dollars for it right does that sound right man i think 1275 i guess we can't open the back because the hatch but yeah i think i'm gonna sell that one to keep this one so let me know all right this guy right here this is the other one so i want to show y'all the jeep real fast we're gonna keep that one this is a parts truck okay so this is how i do it when i do my f-150s i buy one parts truck normally clean titles i prefer to buy clean titles uh and then take the clean title apart um sell motor trans everything out of it and then fix two salvages i don't like to mess with clean titles I don't like to sell them they're high risk um this is a platinum tailgate's damaged but this piece right here is still good this piece right here alone is like a thousand dollars i paid thirty eight hundred dollars for this truck and it has a junk title meaning you can never register this truck it has all power folding steps the battery is dead in it uh it is an eco boost um it's got mold in it from it sitting up but all the seats are good they just need to be clean platinum ed you said these back seats are heated on the platinums yeah look on the, the door panel. oh wow yeah okay yeah so heated rear seats i mean this is this is a really nice parts truck um yeah this is nice this is a freaking platinum uh but yeah we this is what we do man is we'll buy a truck that's all the way together and then we'll take the truck that's all the way together apart and we'll fix two wreck trucks with it uh, like i said this does have a junk title they junked it out um it's not wrecked that piece is missing doesn't run they've got spark plugs out of it so i don't know what's going on with it this step is down but i don't care what's going on with it because we just yeah we just wanted a parts truck but junk titles that's what's interesting is people think <laughs> yeah the grill will end up on a work truck right a thousand dollar platinum grill on a work truck watch because i don't care um people think that salvage and junk titles or, or junk cars aren't worth anything thirty eight hundred dollars is what it took to purchase this truck and this truck does not even run thirty eight hundred freaking dollars okay so that's the kind of money you're playing with if you start messing with like these the trucks f-150 is way more expensive bigger money way bigger money than the uh the cars but man, this is a nice truck man for a junk title it's crazy nuts it's thinking never be registered never be put it back on the road you can't bond it you can't uh go to one of the states that has the loopholes uh i don't want to hear none of that crap because it's not a thing uh you can do older cars like that and other cars but if it's been issued a junk title you can't do it and what i mean by junk titles i mean junk title it's branded junk it says junk on it it's not salvage it's not a total loss it's not a lemon them are different brands this brand on this vehicle is junk junk title the brand on them is salvage salvage it's the brands on these salvage salvage everything on this property is salvage we don't do clean titles we don't touch clean titles all salvage everything back here that i do is salvage somebody was upset in one of the previous videos that we're screwing people over salvage and it's like i've made a career out of doing nothing but salvage and been doing it for going on 10 years and i don't do clean titles we only sell salvage 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 baby <laughs> all right so uh on this on this truck i did some paint work over there and so i'm curious none of this is painted all right so we didn't paint none of this it just needs to be washed it's covered in dust but i went in 3000 this and polished it because i'm curious if it's worth buffing this whole truck now normally we don't buff cars that we flip at all if we have one that's pretty nasty and dull like this this car is gonna have a really high value so two. yeah now we got two so we'll probably buff this one to get rid of that uh that whitish gray even though there's dust on it but you know how dull black looks but this one is really not that dull like look at this side it's untouched i mean this thing is covered in body shop dust but you can see the reflection on it. Now, I think this truck has been repainted, and that's kind of what I want to show y'all real fast, is if you have a vehicle that you su suspect was in an accident or had been repainted before you, uh, I've always tried to show y'all some telltale signs. So if we look right here, after we polish it, or after we polished it, let's see. Okay, so right here. Let's see if we can get this to zoom in. You see that right there? 
you see all of that how it's smooth down here but then up here kind of looks like the texture of an orange all right this is real crappy paintwork that uh somebody has done and then they wet sanded and buffed the whole vehicle so they wet sanded and buffed all this so i think at some point this thing has definitely been wet sanded and buffed this thing has some rust so I suspect that at some point somebody probably did a rust high job and then painted over the whole bedside and wet sand and buff. But this is one thing you can look for on all your vehicles. Normally when people wet sand and buff, they stay about one inch away from the edges um, or so because they don't want to have to fight with getting wax like right up here around all this plastic. Some people even tape it up. So normally you'll find orange peel in hard to buff areas such as this. And as we move down, you can see there's no orange peel. And actually you can see trash in the paint right there which the factory would not factory can have some trash but not like that normally um so i'm gonna safe to say that looking at that, that this has been repainted and you can also look for these telltale signs in your vehicle